Welcome aboard. Y'all on my I took this shit over for the day. Yo, what's good, man? Y'all already know what it is, man. We're going to be doing our top 10 hip hop album list of 2022. Great year. I know I'm kind of late, you know what I'm saying? But I decided to kind of wait just in case anybody wants to sit here and, you know, throw some crazy surprises towards the end of the year or some shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hopefully be dropping this on actually like New Year's or like the day after, you know what I'm saying? So we'll see whenever this shit drops. But let's go ahead and get into the top 10 list, man. So starting off, I'll just say, yo, this is just my top 10 list, you know what I'm saying? It's not anything set in stone it's just stuff that i was playing throughout the year that i feel like really had an impact on me this year you know what i'm saying dope year for hip-hop had a lot of actual albums i was coming out especially in the underground if you're into the underground scene too a lot of stuff came out all at one time you know what i'm saying so um if it didn't make the list that don't mean it ain't dope i don't like it or whatever the hell this is just stuff that i personally was listening to a lot this year so yeah man let's go ahead and get started at number 10 let's go so at number 10, I don't know who's going to be surprised, but it's going to be Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. You know what I'm saying? Dope album for me. Really like the production side of everything on here. Production choices were a lot different than his previous albums. But just like every other Kendrick Lamar album, man, it's not always the same. Every single album is actually different. When you actually think about Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, it's like the end of a saga for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, starting off as just like that good kid in the Mad City, ending it off with saying at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, I am not you guys' savior, I'm not a prophet, I'm not any of the stuff that you guys depict me out to be. Um, and the great thing about this album is, I think a lot of people that will relate to this album, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, people like me, um, enjoy it a lot more. Is it a replay album where I'm sitting there playing day in and day out? No. Um, but the lyricism really impacts me because, you know, I've lived a lot of things that he's talking about before, you know what I'm saying? There's some really dope themes throughout, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, it, it wasn't something that I played um, as much as I thought I would, you know what I'm saying? So that's why it's not in my top one. Um, but yeah, dope album nonetheless. Let's get on to the next one, man. At number nine, we got Luca with Raw Extractions, man. Um, if y'all never heard of Luke, he's a dope MC coming out of Memphis, Tennessee. He dropped Why Look Up When God's in the Mirror last year. Another dope album that came from him. Um, but Raw Extractions is just a really dope surprise for me. Um, if you never heard of him, definitely check this joint out, man. The production on here is top notch. This is another sleeper album, man. Very introspective. I'm liking the subject matter that he talks about on here, man. Covers themes like uh, religion, street tales, and stuff like that. And it's like really interweaving into his lyricism and stuff like that, man. Wordplay, everything he pretty much talks about on here is really dope. Um, if you guys never actually check this out, because uh, I know a lot of people probably haven't and they have no clue what I'm talking about on this shit, you know what I'm saying? Definitely check this joint out. Really great list and really great surprise. At number eight, we have Boldy James and Nicholas Craven with Fair Exchange, No Robbery. Another dope album from Boldy James. He's been running 2022 himself with multiple projects that he dropped. Uh, so it was kind of up in the air on, you know, which projects that I wanted to kind of pick out. Uh, Mr. 1008 was definitely on there with Future Wave. is another dope album with Boldy James from this year. So it was kind of in between, you know, some other Boldy projects. But this ended up actually being on top, you know what I'm saying, for me personally. Just that crazy mixture of Nicholas Craven's soulful beats and the grimy street tales of Boldy James just hit home for me on this one, man. Really dope production and bars, man. What can I say at this point with Boldy James, man? <laughs> like, if you know, you know at this point there's nothing that's kind of new with this album. Um, besides the fact that it's a full wing project between him and Nicholas Craven, it just works, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know what I'm saying, at this point. But I was actually waiting on a Nicholas Craven and Bully James project, man. They had dropped, you know, two singles previously to this. Um, and just hearing them together on those two tracks, man, was just crazy to me, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, yo, we actually need... Uh, for these dudes to actually drop a full length project together and they did with this joint, you know what I'm saying? Favorite tracks on here, man, Designer Drugs, Monterey Jack, and You Ain't No Menace. At number seven, are you surprised? We got Conway the Machine with God Don't Make Mistakes. Was waiting on this album, Shady Debut, for a long ass time. Finally got it in 2022. So I was really excited to kind of hear the direction that Conway was gonna take with this one. Uh, just the way that he was kind of hyping it up and hyping the album up and stuff like that and he did not disappoint with this The great thing that I think about this album is a really good mixture in between banger tracks and him being a lot more introspective um, That's why I like Conway the Machine the most on the label because I think that he is the most um, 
relatable. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can relate to this dude. I feel like he's the more down to earth, kind of telling you his pains, his struggles, um, and the things that he, you know, goes through on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? That's why I really like this album because he really talks not only about the hood and street tales and stuff like that, but just, you know, things that he goes through, you know, mentally and physically that we didn't even know about. Things like, you know, his child passing away. Um, and he's like, you know, actually letting us into his life, um, telling us about his struggles and his pains on this one. You know what I'm saying? Favorite tracks on here, Piano Love, Alchemist went crazy on this shit. You know what I'm saying? John Woo Flick, God Don't Make Mistakes, and Stress. Uh, those are probably my favorite tracks on this joint, man. Really fire. Next up is another album that everybody was really anticipating just because they wanted these two godfathers to get together and go crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's The Alchemist with Rock Marciano with The Elephant Man's Bones. Really, really dope album for me. Um, I was really anticipating this one just because, you know, Alchemist and Rock Marciano are some of my favorite rapper producers. Um, I mean, they showed up together on, you know, multiple singles and stuff like that together. Doing work on multiple projects like Behold a Dark Horse and stuff like that, but never had like a full length project together. So it was actually great to get a full length from both of them. Um, production, of course, man, Alchemist killed this shit. There's no question about it. You know what I'm saying? Ever beat on her hit. And I really like that, you know, pimp mafioso type, you know, type feeling that Alchemist actually gives to the project. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it compromises um, you know, who Rock Marciano is or anything like that. Um, and it really sounds good, man. Bars on here from Rock Marcy. Once again, crazy. Has some really dope, funny lines on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I'm so rich. You know what I'm saying? This bitch look like a goddamn shit on, or pigeon shit on the windshield. Shit like that, bro. Uh, just some really dope lines from Rock Marciano on here. Um, but once again, he also um, kind of gets more into some introspective stuff on his life. Um, it's not just, you know, that mafioso type talk on here. He's also talking about things that he deals with internally um, while dealing with these things and subject matter that he's talking about on the actual album itself, man. Favorite tracks on here got to be Bubble Bath, Zig Zag Zig, and Zip Gun. Really liking that, you know, Knowledge the Pirate and Rock Marciano got back together on that track. Track was dope as hell, man. But overall, really dope project. Um, and I'm glad it actually, you know, made my list. I haven't seen it on too many people's list, but it was not missing mine. You know what I'm saying? All right, coming in at number five, bro. If if this dude messed this up, bro, I'm telling you, the fans went, went crazy. I'm talking about Benny the Butcher with Tana Talk 4. Um, this is his follow-up to Tana Talk 3. Came out in 2018. And man, I'm telling you, like, if he messed that shit up, bro, that shit would have been tragic. You know, fans would have been on his ass like crazy. But luckily, he actually killed this project, bro. Um, and it was a really dope follow-up to Tana Talk 3. Um, didn't really sound exactly like Tana Talk 3, even though he had Danger and the Alchemist on this one. But it still sounded really good beat-wise. Um, there was no compromise, you know, with who Benny was and stuff like that. So that was really dope. Opening up the album with Johnny P's Caddy was just like, <laughs> bruh, J. Cole, I'll tell you right now, Everybody's sitting there trying to hate on me. Oh, yeah, you're a J. Cole hater. Bro, that was feature and verse of the year, bro. That that Cole verse was hard listening to that shit a million times. And that's probably like the hardest J. Cole verse ever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, really dope album, man. Loving the tracks on here, man. Super plug. Got to be one of my favorites as well with the Alchemist on that joint. Really loving Johnny P's Caddy on that one. Uncle Bun, dope as hell with 38 Special. And then Guerrero with him sitting here weaving in his previous albums throughout the bars, bro. Like... <laughs> That shit was fucking hard as fuck. Um, but yeah, man, Town of Talk 4, dope album. Of course, it had to make my list on this one. Next up, at number four, we have another album that I think a lot of people will be kind of surprised about being on my top 10 list for the year. Uh, but it's going to be Jai King the Divine with Black Sun Zoo. Really loving this album, man. Liking the throwback to Operation Doomsday on the cover, bro. Um, and the subject matter on here is just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's definitely one of these albums where you have to listen to multiple times to kind of get, you know, the theme of the album. Um, but just again, man, when you think of Black Sun Zoo, that was the actual war general who came out with a book and stuff like that. Um, and that's just who Ja King is kind of putting himself out to be. You know, that street tell, that street general that's kind of letting you know what's going on throughout the community and stuff like that um, going on within his life giving you that that street prophecy type feel once again on the album and then once again man the production on here was just really really great some favorite tracks on this album man got to be blade of damascus year 2040 year of the monkey and the way um, really dope 
bars on these songs and the production on here is top notch really fucking with year 2040 year of the monkey man it's probably one of my favorite tracks on this album but overall really dope if you guys have not heard of this album before go ahead and check it out man you will not be disappointed whatsoever next up is my guy at number three putting in crazy work draw like eight projects this year can you guess i'll give you a minute to guess go ahead comment it down below give you a, give you a quick second you know what i'm saying go ahead comment it go ahead, com who, who do you think it is comment i want to see the comments up in here I ain't moving on to y'all comment. Mickey Diamond at number three with no liquor before 12. Now I know what you guys are thinking, all right? What's up with Gucci Ghost 2? What's up with Gucci Ghost 1? What's up with Bulletproof Bathroom? What's up with Flair for the Gold? All right, and I'll tell you what's up, bro. No liquor before 12, the theme on here is just dope. Um, you know, him talking about how he has struggled with alcohol addiction and stuff like that production on here is top notch he has mallory knox nicholas craven and big ghost on here plus many others features on here are dope as hell the length of the project is a lot longer than the other projects um, and i feel like as an album overall as a whole it's the strongest you know what I'm saying now gucci ghost one and two um, really dope albums, man. Really almost made this list as well. Um, but when I come to actually think about replay value, how much I've actually like listened to the albums and stuff like that, um, and the meaning, subject matter, the overall full-on package, um, I'm gonna go with you know No Liquor Before 12. Um, definitely like one of my my favorites, as you can see. Just got the tape in too. You know what I'm saying from bars over bullshit just got the tape waiting on the record to come through um but this is one of the strongest albums of this year for me coming from mickey diamond but i like the overall theme of the album man even the album titles on here kind of goes with you know alcoholism drinking there's samples on here that kind of you know feed that theme as well um but there are also dope tracks on here too man like time wasted really dope Happy Hour, I really like that track once again too. Sober Thoughts with Ty Ferris and Josiah the Gift, bro. It's probably like one of the hardest tracks on here too. And the beat ain't even like, it's not hard. It's not a hard beat, but just the subject matter, the way that they're rhyming together on the song is just really dope for me. Um, bro, there's a lot of songs on here, man. Casamigos, No Loitering, White Liquor Lore, Stick Up Men, like, and a lot of these are more, you know, kind of on the down tempo type beats, but the subject matter, the theme of everything just wraps it all up in one big package. Um, and this is why No Liquor Before 12 um, makes it over all the other Mickey Diamond albums, you know what I'm saying? But if you have not checked this out, bro, definitely check the album out. Um, but that is my number three for this list. Coming in at number two, we got Ransom and V-Don with Chaos Is My Ladder, bro. Now this one was really hard for me because I had to either pick this that just recently came out or No Rest For The Wicked, right? Um, and I guess it all just came down to production, okay? Production on this with V-Don ended up, you know, kind of outdoing it for me when you go back and listen to No Rest for the Wicked. Still very dope album. Production on there is freaking amazing, right? But the beats on here were so much more hard hitting um, and, you know, fit the lyricism of what, you know, Ransom was actually talking about. Um, and that's why I ended up kind of outdoing it. I would put both up here because they're both freaking amazing, you know what I'm saying? But... Um, have to pick one, not gonna sit here and put multiple, you know, projects up here at the top three. But once again, man, who can deny that Ransom is the best lyricist out right now, man? I'm still sitting there finding gems with the lyricism that he has in here, man. Every word on this album is literally not wasted. Like, there's always a meaning to whatever he's actually saying in here. If you don't catch it, you literally have to go back, re-listen to it, and you're like, God damn, I did not freaking catch that fucking bar that was right there on the first initial listen. You know what I'm saying? He's literally like a walking bar fest, bro. He's a walking cheat code, just like I always say. Um, and he really has some some really dope talent on here, man. Favorite tracks on here, man. Lone Wolf, All In, and A Most Dreadful Symphony, bro. Really, really dope album, man. And I'm glad I have it on here as my, you know, top, Top two, honestly, man. It was actually pretty hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie to you. Now, the hard part, bro. The hard part, right? So, it, it was interchangeable between Ransom and this one. Kind of kind of hard for me to actually pick through them all. But, damn, this album was so goddamn good, bro. But at number one, we got The God. The Godson. You know what I'm saying? Knives. 
with King's Disease 3. Oh, damn, bro. Honestly, it was in between this and the Ransom joint, man. was really going back and forth on which one I was going to put up there. Like, this one's a little bit fresher. Am I just, like, in the honeymoon phase on the Ransom album? Or is this one more realistic? Like, how? which one do I play more? Gym playlist actual dailies in here you know streaming it on spotify stuff like that like which one do i play more which lyricism do i like more lessons do i like more and i just had to go with nas man with nas king's disease 3 like first off my guy's a legend right the subject matter that he talks about on this album is just immaculate once again we all know what we're gonna get when we get a nas album but the subject matter that he talks about is just so crazy Production, right? Production from Hit Boy. I just don't want to hear nothing from anybody again. Doubt and Hit Boy, bro. Um, it was literally like the last three albums that they gave us was just like a taste tester, and then you know, King's Disease Three was just like straight up in your face. Like I said before, man. Subject matter with Nas, you're always gonna get those lessons and get those gems. Um, that's why it was kind of like a toss up between him and Ransom because they both kind of do the same exact things. Um, but then I had to kind of narrow it down to how much tracks are you giving us? You know what I'm saying? How much quality are you giving us with the track? Um, and King's Disease 3, man, it got us like, what, 15 tracks on it or something like that? Um, and every single track on this album hits, you know what I'm saying? The, the beat selection was really dope. Um, you know, there's not only just, you know, that one sound when it comes to Nas. Um, and he kind of proved that he can rap literally over anything. You know what I'm saying? Hit Boy hit us with some dope ass fucking beat switches on his joint as well. It was just great, man. Like, what can you say at this point in time about Nas besides he's literally taken over in the next era of hip hop? You know what I'm saying? Like, he dominated his era. Now he's coming back with a vengeance and he's dominating this era that's here right now and proving to you that he is, you know, one of the greatest you know rappers of all time you know what I'm saying to think that you can be in one generation of rappers and then come back into this generation and dominate the scene right now that just goes to show you that he is the best hands down but honestly man i can't even pick my favorite track on this one because almost everyone hits you know what I'm saying legit thump reminisce one man twice a child beef like Bro, there's too many tracks on here that just hit so damn hard and hits you really heavy with the lyricism and subject matter that he's talking about that I honestly can't even sit here and pick what tracks are my favorites. Um, but nonetheless, very dope album, man, and it honestly deserves the top spot um, for me. And that's saying a lot because you know me, man, like I don't put a lot of you know mainstream albums into my top 10 list at the end of the year, so... To be on my top 10 list, bro, like, you really had to kind of hit me hard, you know, right out the gate. But that was my top 10 list, man. Do you agree with me? Do you not? Let me know in the comment section down below, man. Um, and in 2023, hopefully, man, we can sit here and get a lot of great output from the channel itself. If you are new to the channel, man, make sure you guys subscribe, hit that like button or whatever. If you're not fucking with it, bro, you don't like my list, bro. And you're just like, man, fuck this guy, I'm not fucking blah, blah, blah. Then go ahead, bro. Hit that dislike button and skirt up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, it's your boy Tev. Look forward to whatever we got going on for 2023. So stay tuned. And I'll catch you on the next video, man. I'm up out of here. Peace.